Zach's Screen of the Week, an overview of a timely stock screening strategy aimed at helping you produce more profitable investing results. Let's show you the right way to find growth and value stocks now, shall we? With Kevin Matris, our top stock screener, head of the Research Wizard Division at Zax.com. Growth and value. Right. Sounds like a winning combination to me. Definitely. You're is. actually going to show us how to do it the right way. That is right. Okay. Uh, yeah, growth and value, it is a winning combination, especially now with growth rates being kind of subdued and valuations getting increasingly higher. Well, the kind of companies that produce these characteristics or that have these characteristics are still out there. Yeah. They just have to be found. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, there, there's plenty of these companies uh, around, but it is kind of getting harder to find companies that fit squarely into both of those categories simultaneously. Now, first off, what everybody has to understand is what characteristics a growth investor and a value investor will look for. So a growth investor... He tries to focus in on companies with big earnings growth, of course. And this makes sense because earnings are the things that drive prices. But nobody wants to overpay for growth. When you're looking at value, a lot of value investors, they'll kind of focus in on low P.E. ratios, low multiples and this kind of thing. But a lot of these companies will have low P.E. ratios because they don't really have any real growth to speak of. So they lack earnings power. Problem is, when you're looking at these companies with excessively low P.E.s, there's, the people are unwilling to pay up for them because there's nothing really to pay up for. So I think if you try to find companies with both good growth and good value, that truly is a winning combination. Okay, so that puts a little different <coughs> light on it. They have to have right. both characteristics at the same time. Right. And, and so there's a right way and a wrong way. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but you're going to show us the right way. Yeah, the, the, the problem is that when, when somebody is trying to find growth and value stocks, they normally normally start with one thing first and then try to find the other. So for example, if you're looking for companies with big growth rates, that is the first thing you put in your screen. That's great. You're going to find a lot of big growth companies. Mm -hmm. But if you then try to find the companies with the lowest valuations from that list, you may find that all of those growth stocks have high valuations. So all you're really doing is you're finding the growth stocks with the lowest valuations, even though those valuations may be high. So for example, if let's say all of those growth stocks have PEs of over 20, right? So you're finding all of the companies with the lowest high valuations, and a lot of these uh, these these companies are companies that a valuation guy would never even consider because those valuations are so high. If you were to reverse this and let's say you looked at companies with the lowest valuations first, that's great. You're going to find companies with, uh, with low multiples, low P.E. ratios. But then if you try to find the companies with the highest growth rates from that list, you may find that all of those companies have subpar growth rates. So all you're really doing is finding the, the best companies with the subpar growth rates, thus missing the, uh, the, the real goal of trying to find the best of both worlds. Now, some people will try and overcome this limitation by straddling the middle. So they will put in classical metrics like uh, growth rates over 20, uh, as well as PE ratios under 20. Mm -hmm. But if you do that, you're really going to generate a huge list of stocks. You're going to find a ton of stocks. Uh, they meet all of those qualifications, but oftentimes you're going to be sifting through a huge list of average stocks. So again, you're not really finding the best of the growth rates or the best of the valuations. All right, don't keep us in suspense any longer. Show <coughs> us. All right. How do we find these stocks? Well, first off, the way I am doing it uh, is I am using a uniform ranking method, and I am simultaneously ranking both metrics, uh, and that is the focus of this week's screen. It focuses on companies with the highest growth rates and the lowest P.E. ratios all at the same time. So here's the payoff. <laughs> Let me show you how to do it. You've asked me three times. I'm finally going to answer the question. Just answer the question. So here we go. We're first starting off by looking at companies with one-year projected growth rates better than 80% of all of the other companies out there. 
And the way we are doing this is we are using a uniform rank of 1 through 99, 99 being the best growth rates, and I screen for stocks ranked 80 or better. Once again, meaning they are better than 80% of all of the other companies out there in terms of growth rates. All right. The next item is companies that have the lowest forward P.E. ratios lower than 80% of all of the other companies out there. Once again, using a uniform rank of 1 through 99, this time 99 having the lowest P.E.s. I screen for stocks ranked 80 or better, meaning companies with P.E.s that are lower than 80% of all the other companies out there on this metric. Okay. Then I applied it to companies with a Zacks rank of a 2 or less. Uh, meaning no holds, no sells, or no strong sells. Got it. Uh, and all of this stuff was applied to stocks trading above $5 with an average daily trading volume of over 100,000 shares or better. So with this screen, we are not starting with one and then trying to find the other. We are looking for things that truly, truly, truly are the best on both of these metrics uh, because essentially I am demanding they have to be better than 80% of all the other companies on the growth rates while also being better than 80% of all the other companies on this valuation metric as well. And that's how you're really going to find the best of both worlds. Now let me say this too. Uh, it's a very cool item to use. I did this with the Research Wizard. So if you are trying to do this at home, with the research wizard, I would say go to the printed article. I have a screenshot to see how to set this up. Also, too, this particular screen comes preloaded with the research wizard, so if you don't even want to have to bother setting it up, all you have to do is point and click, and boom, you'll be able to access the screen and get all the stocks. All right. Get uh, a couple of stocks out here. Five, as a matter of fact, that came through the screen. Got five stocks. I think there was about, I think there was like 15 or 16 stocks that, uh, that came through the screen. But, yeah, here's five of them. Uh, you got Chicago Bridge and Iron, Health Spring, Superior Energy, Trinity Industries and worldwide acceptance. And again, all of these companies are proving to be in the top percentile on both of these categories. They all have a fantastic Zacks rank, uh, and these are definitely companies to consider. Do you own any of them? I have Chicago Bridge and Iron and worldwide oh, acceptance. Okay, for a change. Ooh. He's got a couple. <laughs> Get over to Zacks.com's homepage and check out the printed version of this uh, week's screen of the week, especially if you want to. Delve into this a little bit deeper, look at that screenshot that Kevin talked about, and just take it a little bit more of a step-by-step -step basis for you. Sometimes it has a little different impact when you see it printed right in front of you. Uh, and if you want to find out more about the Research Wizard, all you need to do is go to zax.com forward slash Research Wizard. With Kevin Matris and the Screen of the Week, I'm Terry Ruffalo.